So the credentialing pathway was first introduced in 1986 and it was the first time actually that the term credential diabetes educator was used as well and that pathway included university study specialising in diabetes. It also included mentoring and spending time working with people with diabetes to really understand the diabetes. That was introduced in 1986. But of course, medications and diabetes technologies continue to evolve and our understanding of diabetes is much deeper and the management is more complex. The medications are more complex, the technology is becoming more complex. Of course, it's also helping people to manage their diabetes a lot better as well. But medications continue to be refined and specialised, they're getting more and more effective. There are many different types of insulin, many types of other medications and diabetes technology is advancing at a rapid pace. There is a need for us to constantly review and check in on our credentialing pathway and check whether it's still continuing to meet contemporary needs. So we're at that point now where we need to evolve that pathway further and introduce some change. We've recently reviewed the pathway, we've consulted with our members and other stakeholders about where it's working well and what needs to change. And a result of that, and really broad consultation through surveys and interviews and expert reference groups and so on, we've changed the pathway. We still have the requirement for a graduate certificate in diabetes education from a university. We still have a requirement for mentoring and for a minimum number of hours of practical experience in diabetes management. We've introduced two new elements in there. One is a professional practice micro-credential, which covers the ethics and laws and so on around scope of practice as well, around being a credentialed diabetes educator. And we've introduced a workplace-based assessment, which will actually practically assess that a CDE is ready to practice as a credentialed diabetes educator. They're the final steps. There's assessment by a panel of very experienced CDEs of that workplace-based assessment and then following the completion of all those steps, a person can become a credentialed diabetes educator.